reminder. Um, just a little couple little points before we get started. We're going to use the GoToWebinar um, toolbar, the question and answer, um, the uh, the question and answer widget for interacting. And today I'm going to we're going to try a little something new. Instead of using it just for um, questions, uh, I'm going to uh, ask you to participate in the session using that written interface um, several times so that we have your content uh, coming into the workshop. And I was kind of imagining it, you know, if we have, um, you know, 40 people in a room, uh, we can't see each other, but, but, um, but, but we do have your input uh, coming in to the uh, presentation. So I'm gonna, we're going to give that a try. And, and in the past, we've used it to, um, really to field questions and make sure that we had good a good forum for a question and answer. But um, today, since uh, Mark's voice is the only one that we're going to be hearing, I'm going to be channeling you when you when you uh, provide some written information for us. So um, we're going to get started. Uh, this is a webinar that is part of the CBuild program. The title of the webinar is uh, Including Members in the ENDS Dialogue. Um, we have it scheduled for 90 minutes. Um, not, we certainly won't go over that. I won't guarantee that we'll use every minute, but we do have a pretty full, um, uh, pretty full agenda. So um, let's see. I have a couple of little announcements. One, just to uh, again, how we're going to be interacting is through the Go to Webinar widget, the part that says question and answer. And um, underneath enter a question for staff, you can type stuff in there and hit send. And, um, and we get that, and that will be coming in very handy several times during the presentation. Um, feel free to do that. Uh, it doesn't get broadcast. It just comes here to, um, to Webinar Central. Um, the other thing that I would like to uh, kind of make a plug for is um, CGIN has a, uh, a new listserv that is um, for directors. And I'm uh, in the packet at the very end of the, um, at the end of the packet, there's a page for resources. I'm putting this section up on the page right now, um, on the screen right now. And uh, I was thinking that the content that we're going to be um, working with today is um, really kind of an amazing opportunity for content that could be shared and pushed around on this uh, director's listserv that has, it, it's really a new tool for, for directors um, of food co-ops. And so I, I guess I'd like for you to keep that in mind as we go through um, the session and imagine what types of, of things that you could share out um, on the listserv. And certainly, if you uh, if you start doing that, um, it'll be uh, make the listserv um, you know potentially very valuable to all of us who are um, pursuing this work. So um, the I think right now there's 200 directors enrolled. There's been very little activity on the listserv, partly because you know we're still learning around, uh, about you know how it can be useful to us. So I'm kind of making a pitch for um, this kind of strategic thinking of boards um, might be, you know, very, very valuable to us. So I'm going to come back up here to the top. And um, so here's the, the, the way that we're going to approach the session is um, um, first I'm going to kind of pick apart the title. Um, as, as I was preparing for it, the title kind of broke into pieces, and I thought that each piece was worth talking about. So we're going to do that um, and kind of review or explore um, the meaning of these different words. Um, beyond that, we're going, to, um, we're going to work on some kind of basic ideas of cooperative accountability and the accountability chain. We'll have a very brief lesson, maybe the briefest lesson ever on uh, policy governance. 
and then we're going to you know really talk about this whole idea of of strategic thinking and in, uh, including that strategic thinking in regular board life and uh, connecting um, out to members with it and in the in that part of the session I'm really going to be you know asking you for your ideas that I will um, kind of translate from you out to the rest of the group so um, participants will consider the importance of the ongoing ends dialogue what's up with that uh, we'll see that members um, could be considered as a dynamic group um, we'll we'll take a look at the idea of of allocating regular board time for this work so um, that should sound good to everyone who doesn't want another thing to do like oh we mean we have to include members in the ends dialogue is that extra <laughs> um, and uh, and hopefully we'll provide some resources that will um, help your board move uh, forward with this work and kind of to uh, build on that last point the C build program is really designed to provide boards with ongoing support so um, all of the C build consultants um, uh, can help you with with the content and the ideas that are provided and and uh, and, and build on it with you so um, please don't take this on and uh, and feel like you need to work on it uh, in isolation on your own um, take advantage of us that's what we're here for and also uh, try out that new CGN listserv and see what becomes of that so um, including members so now we're breaking apart the title including members what's when I was thinking about including members, part of what's implied there is that the board has created a leadership position and is driving a conversation. And we want to include members in that process. I really like how, um, how the, the, the yeah. work starts with the board and kind of is then framing what's the conversation and who do we want to include in the conversation of course it makes total sense that we would be including members um, but sometimes when we uh, talk about member linkage or asking the questions what do members want uh, you know I've observed where you know we can end up in this place where that becomes kind of disempowering for the board because you're not sure what it looks like and not sure what the answers are and this approach that we're going to be presenting tonight really um, put flip-flops it and says that gee the board is authorized to be the the leader of the organization uh, it's been authorized uh, to represent the members and to really take the lead in in whatever and so uh, we're filling in the whatever blank by saying hey we're thinking we're learning we're working on stuff the work that we're thinking about and working on is relevant to members um, we're going to include members in that work so that's um, uh, the including members description um, members here's an interesting well I find it kind of interesting I've been playing with it since um, uh, early June and it's this site so you know kind of fresh for me I know and and some of you may be uh, you know already like my mark how long did it take you to come up with that idea but um, I was thinking that that members uh, sometimes when we're on the board we think of them as in a certain way that and, and I'm calling that certain way I'm 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 saying that's static that we sometimes we, when we're in the board meeting we say members think or members something and we have the static picture of members so um, I just going to draw you um, a quick picture that um, that I've been working on to help kind of break down this idea that members are static so think of this dot as the idea that um, we think of members in kind of a certain way and that's how we think of them and then we're going to kind of build on that on that idea all right so the dot is members that are kind of fixed in time and 
at a minimum, it seems like we should think about members on a time continuum. So no longer is the member just like members in a certain way. Now at least we have them uh, over time. And then it seems like that's really not the end because uh, to me, the straight line is still kind of imply static. So I thought, well, can we introduce some dynamics to that picture and say that, you know, members change and member needs change um, over and over time. So it's, it's actually a dynamic line instead of a static line. Um, and then I thought, well, that wasn't quite uh, right either because, in fact, we have more members I mean, every time that I've asked a, a co-op, you know, are you growing, staying the same, or shrinking, everyone that I've ever asked that has said, oh, no, or we keep getting new members. It's, you know, amazing. Where are they coming from? Or whatever the answer is. And, and so not only is it dynamic, but there's, but there's more of them. And then kind of the last, uh, the last iteration is the idea that um, sometimes a co-op might have, like, incremental growth and then do something that would create a leap in, in, in growth and then have kind of the dynamics again and then it might have another leap and the um, uh, La Montanita is a great example of this when they were you know this happened and then they added a, 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 a another store in another town and all of a sudden they had a whole lot new members and and then that's not even staying the same there's still change there and I don't know perhaps um, Perhaps you all in Greenfield are experiencing that same thing with your um, with your move into um, into Shelburne Falls. But so the word members, I would like us. This is just like, like my pitch is that if we were thinking of members in a certain way and had a picture, that we look back in time and come up with kind of some some ways that we can imagine that members have changed or member needs have changed over time up till now and that that helps us think about how members and member needs might change um, you know in the future and so in fact this is the first little time for the interactive session and um, I wonder if uh, you could help me with that idea a little bit and and type in, you know, I'm kind of looking for what are some of those dynamics, right? Like that as a board that you might expect that, you know, or that you've experienced in your board. So um, if you have some ideas on, on this idea of why is Mark drawing a squiggly line instead of a static line? Um, and so from Greenfields, the question what, or the answer was, well, hey, we have a 10% increase in, in members when we added our second store. So, so the question is, um, uh, what's implied in my picture is that sometimes we think of members as a static thing, and I've drawn that as a dot. And part of, I think, the... Um, including members in the ends dialogue is that we're going to do this over a period of time and that members and member needs might be changing and so my question is how do you um, how would you describe potential dynamics in membership so we can see that growth in membership is one way um, any other ideas giving you some the demographics might shift so actually who is in our community and uh, and becoming members might change and that's really been um, uh, apparent in in some of the urban marketplaces um, let's see community economics we might have a major change in the local economy thanks for that um, uh, some some communities might have a seasonal shift due to university calendar or something like that. Um, 
let's see, new types of members. Oh, this is good. New, we might have a change in members when uh, when our services change. So when food service was, when food services were added, um, uh, we picked up a different type of member. Nice. Um, we put down the fire at the general store, honey. Hey, you know, whoever just said general store, honey, uh, somehow is able to hear you. <laughs> and uh, um, so just don't start a big conversation. <laughs> um, let's see. And if you're having trouble using, oh, okay, cool. Um, let's see. Here's a, here's a co-op that has had, uh, we have growth 50% 50 uh, 50 in five years after relocation and needs have changed. That's, you know, that's what we're talking about, you know. How do we how do we sit around the boardroom and imagine, you know, dynamics like that? Um, another one, new membership requirements, new programs. Um, so great. So there's there's some, you know, a taste of of uh, what it might be like to think of members uh, dynamically rather than rather than statically and please uh, feel free to give me feedback on that specific idea and or um, play around with it on the on the listserv um, this is the uh, the debut um, uh, of that idea outside of a couple of, of retreats so um, okay now we're going to go to ends. The reason, of course, that we want to have a sense of uh, a real sense of our members is that um, uh, the board is is grappling with the idea of of ends. Um, so I'm going to just share with you ends and how I have internalized it. Uh, it's been kind of helpful to come up with some words other than ends because of course when you mention ends out in the world it doesn't really mean anything so a really simple one desired outcomes gee what are the desired outcomes of our organization what are the results that we're looking for what is the purpose of the cooperative um, this preamble is one that I use now to really help me get into that outcome thinking results thinking as a result of all that we do, all the programs and activities our cooperative will have dot dot dot. And, and so when I um, help a board do um, ends development workshops, I'm always using that preamble because it, it makes you skip over <laughs> all of the programs and activities and all the efforts of everything that uh, is going on, even though you know we want to honor those and celebrate them, but they're not actually the desired um, the desired results and I just want to show a picture here um, and this will just take a second probably for your screen to um, to refresh um, this is from the United Way and um, over here on the right we have outcomes and on the left we have inputs activities and outputs and um, when we look at the things that they're talking about, when they're talking about outcomes, they're, they're, it's the difference. It's new knowledge, increased skills, changes in attitudes or value, modified behavior, improved conditions, altered status. So you can see from that kind of language what, um, you know, again, I, I need a lot of help in just getting to the idea of, well, what's an outcome? Because <laughs> the activities and inputs are always so interesting. Um, when we're talking about ends, we're really talking about um, what is the result of all this stuff? How have members actually benefited um, from, from our efforts? And, and, and I show this United Way picture just because it's, you know, it's not a policy governance thing, so it's not an ends um, you know, specific drawing and their whole reason for getting involved in outcome thinking is because they're spending gazillions of dollars on, uh, you know, on these other three, in these other three areas. And the point is actually, well, are we making any difference here? Are we doing the good that we, that we hoped um, that we'd be doing? So as, as directors um, and as governors, 
that is a focus point that we're you know we're accountable for the stuff that's going on the activities in the programs but we're also accountable for the result that's being produced um, the other two key concepts in the uh, in the, the that are embedded in the word ends are the the who is meant to benefit from desired outcomes and is it worth the effort um, and I think that we'll not be getting into um, those things so much today but it is important um, to know that it isn't just results it's actually well who is actually getting the results and was it worth the effort um, so let's see ends dialogue um, that's what we're going to work a fair amount on today. We're going to um, have that be interactive. We're going to complete a little worksheet, toss around some ideas. Um, and um, I'm going to show a picture right here. This is part of the packet. And it'll, again, it'll just take a second for your... Um, so this is a picture that that we've developed that we you know find useful in in separating out two parts of the board's job so we've got two circles in this picture uh, lower circle and upper upper circle and the lower circle is one that is probably very familiar to us because it's about the delegation uh, process that happens with management and um, and how the board is accountable for that. So we're talking about the monitoring process and reflecting on policies and all of that. And it's the top part that um, that is really this this idea of great. We have policies and expectations. And specifically, uh, let's for sake of argument, we'll say that we have uh, articulated our ends policies or our our desired outcomes or the results that we expect, like we were just talking about. And once we've written them down, it doesn't mean that, that, that we're done. That in fact, there's a whole other process that can build uh, on top of the um, fact that you have now uh, articulated expectations. And that's what we're going to work on tonight. And it, we call it the, the ends dialogue because ultimately, it's rooted in what your desired outcomes are. But you're kind of after this question of how do we keep pushing that around? And it's not pushing it around for sake of having kind of frenetic policies, but more uh, about this idea of building wisdom and knowledge. How do we be smart together? How do we learn together? How do we think together? How do we have a conversation together about the expectations that we have for the organization. So that's really what we're after here with this ENDS dialogue, an output, a tangible output of this beyond the building wisdom and knowledge is the um, uh, ability to reflect on the policies that you have based on the board's own work plan and check to see if you're fine staying with the policies that you have or no, you know, actually things have changed, or we've learned more, so we're going to frame it differently, um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this circle is really um, what I like about this picture, you know, not so much the, just the picture, but the whole process is that it does allow for the board to create its own, uh, its own process, its own kind of strategic thinking path um, that is totally complementary and tied into what management is doing on rolling out programs and activities and making sure that the um, that the implementation and all that is 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 connected to your policies but this is really you know built on top of that a whole different level so there is um, ends dialogue uh, dialogue why use this word and um, I guess I was lucky enough to work in a Montessori school for a bunch of years before I um, uh, started doing the um, co-op board consulting and and one of the the books that was used in the uh, middle school seminars was uh, this book on dialogue by David Boehm and um, 
and he 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 was this you know great thinker and actually kind of got scared in a way that uh, we didn't know how to talk uh, among ourselves and build conversation and um, have effective conversation and he was worried that we might just blow up the planet and he wrote this book on dialogue and if you Google David Bohm or get the book um, you'll see that he's thought a lot about it and so I try and use the word um, in a case like this when we're trying to sustain meaningful conversation over time and honor and build on the contributions that are that are made to that um, so there you go including members in the ends dialogue has a lot of meaning <laughs> I hope that uh, I hope that was um, interesting and and useful and um, thank you Tom with your sample uh, ends policy for reading that we're gonna um, come back to that when we um, start w doing a little bit of our strategic thinking together so I wanted to spend just a minute on talking about cooperative accountability um, and really bringing it into the boardroom and saying so what's up with this idea um, and first of all we've got the definition uh, or or a definition of a cooperative and what's nice is that this is just hey this is actually operated for members for the purpose of producing some common benefit and value and you'll see that that word is going to come this idea of common good or common benefit and value is going to come back um, in a minute accountable and so what's up with being accountable and that is that we're giving a justifying analysis or explanation to prove a trust is fulfilled or an obligation is met so the board is sitting there going okay well we're accountable for everything that's going on and what I would suggest is that one thing that you could one one kind of layer that you could have to that is um, are we in touch with this idea of a trust being fulfilled and what did we think that was going to look like and how is that going to look over time and how is it dynamic Um, so cooperative accountability trust is fulfilled or an obligation is met so here we are we're going to take just a minute and demonstrate the accountability chain um, we have member owners at the top what's really um, great not only is to reflect back on what we talked about a few minutes ago that member owners being uh, dynamic but it's also kind of handy to honor and celebrate that the member owners are also diverse and I like to just kind of draw that in like this way and that kind of by definition they all don't agree <laughs> and um, you know you could say well and, and in fact you look around the boardroom and say and we don't all agree on everything either and it's you know quite obvious that the um, that the member owners aren't going to uh, agree on on everything so but we have come together and lo and behold the member owners did authorize the board to uh, to work on their behalf the board in turn in most cases is delegating to a GM or equivalent as a sole point of delegation under the GM there is uh, further delegation to the thing that we all have a lot of contact with which is all of the operations and activities and programs of the co-op and yet the operation isn't the point that is not the desired outcome really it's okay out of the all of that effort uh, that's going on here what is the value that's being uh, produced and um, that that is why we're we're invested so that's the loop back to member owners and in our perfect world the board uh, actually articulated um, the desired outcomes and put that out as a target for accomplishment so that it wasn't accidental and the board obviously doesn't want to do that in isolation so it's going to include others including members all right so there's the loop um, member owners end up realizing 
the value that's produced on their behalf as hopefully articulated by the board and then put that onto a timeline where you can say, hey, a lot of our co-ops are 30 years old, some of them are older, some of them are newer, but some of this stuff changes. And so that's why we would want to be really constantly thinking about and taking seriously our obligation to be considering um, what's going on. Everybody okay out there? Because here comes your policy governance lesson. First, let me um, just pick up a couple of comments. Uh, there's another book called Dialogue and the Art of Thinking Together by Bill William Isaacs. Thanks for that input. And um, thanks for your um, affirmation that you're okay. I appreciate that. Um, so here's the very brief policy governance lesson. Ends are the point. <laughs> I could end the lesson there. Okay, That might be better, in fact. Uh, ends, these are the point. The ends, we've already talked about what they are. Executive limitations, while they are necessary, they are not the point. And one thing that happened with policy governance over the last 10 years in food co-ops is that boards, because we monitor limitation policies, often we have it spread out during the year and we take our accountability role very seriously. They, ha they, you know, became very much filled up board time, and um, it's very exciting to think of how they don't consume all your time because, in fact, they're not the point. The ends and the ends dialogue really is the point. So um, uh, please take a look at how you all are spending your time, and since that is a precious uh, and limited resource. Uh, the time of your um, contributions as directors. Um, please try and spend as much of it as possible on your desired outcomes and thinking about uh, members and member needs. Okay, thank you. And now, there's our little chart. Okay. Now we're going to talk uh, just for a few minutes about uh, the work of this guy, um, uh, Brett Fairbairn, and um, a document that he has written, which is called Three Strategic Concepts for the Guidance of Cooperatives. I think the full title probably goes on to name them, which is uh, Linkage, Transparency, and Cognition. Um, he was a speaker at CCMA. Uh, a few years ago and is a um, Canadian cooperative academic. Um, the whole read is 20 pages. Um, it's, it's really brilliant. It's worth reading. And the first few times that you try it out, it might be hard. <laughs> At least it was for me. Um, so for the purpose of tonight, I have extracted out some of his thinking um, to help us with our work of uh, thinking about things uh, dynamically. So uh, Fairbairn and change. Okay, so um, uh, change can happen to an organization as an unconscious process, but this is not always desirable. <laughs> I like how he is so nice there. Um, Change should be undertaken by an organization as a thinking or cognitive process involving imagination, discovery, systematic investigation, and pragmatic choice among well-understood options. Okay. I mean, wow, what a gem. I mean, how, you know, how many board meetings could we go through where we aren't actively using our imagination, for example? Um, so this is really... Um, allowing us to um, to own the fact that change happens and um, and that we should have a discovery process and you know kind of get out there in thinking land all right um, perhaps surprisingly paying attention to how co-ops think leads to additional insights 
into successful cooperative business and service strategies. Um, the, the, the really concrete example that I have uh, about that idea is the idea that if, if a board has its own work plan and all of a sudden you figured out how to allocate, let's say, 80% of your board meeting time for eight out of 10 board meetings a year into thinking uh, strategically, and only every now and then you drop out of that process and, and reflect on if you have the policies that you want. Um, if you're doing the other things, like including members in that work by writing about it, and you have your management staff or whoever else is coming to your board meetings sitting in on that, that additional insights and, um, and kind of the, 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 there, there's a side benefit of, um, of uh, and, and let's see, Carver, Carver says it this way. He's, he says, and this is on this chart, it might not come up on your screen uh, right quickly. When leaders are learning and growing, everything about them communicates the same opportunity to other people. They're excited, they do things differently. One of the most profound and unusual experience people can have on the job is to see their leaders grow. And I think that that uh, that you know you wouldn't, as part of your work plan, predict what those kind of insights and impacts would be. But I would suggest that um, they might happen. Um, this next idea by Fairbairn that the future is unknown and unknowable, from a governance position, that's a really powerful place to start. Um, rather than uh, say, hey, we actually have all the answers, might be more interesting if you say, gee, what are the questions that we should be asking? How can we be proactive about thinking about the future? And he goes on to say, um, having a mental model or an intellectual framework to really push around your ideas is, is, is really helpful. And in a way, that's what we're we're presenting with this idea of the ends dialogue and don't just stop when you have your policies done, keep it going and start asking uh, strategic questions. So another part that, uh, that Fairbairn uh, explores is transparency and transparency has this real strong connection to perception and trust. And, um, and the idea that that if the members can see where you're going, if they can anticipate your actions, if they understand what you're thinking about and why, that they are going to be connected to your work. Um, that's different from just having the store effectively meeting their needs as consumers. I think that, I mean, there's, we, we go on here to the Fairbairn talks about uh, the cooperative being an agent that operates on behalf of the members. And there's certainly an aspect of that where the agent is uh, the, the link between members and what they want to be eating, right? The effective buying agent where, you know, you hear the members say, oh, I love shopping at the co-op because I, I can trust the products that are on the shelf. I'm going to kind of elevate that idea of effective agent up to this uh, thinking level of, of um, you know, gee, when you're when the board is thinking about the future, um, are you being a good agent of the members? Are you working on stuff that is relevant to members, thinking about things that are important to them and that might have an impact on the co-op's relationship to meeting member needs, right? And then this uh, tying that back to uh, including members in that process, which at a minimum could just be a storytelling process, right? Where if you've actually assumed the leadership position and you have an ongoing uh, uh, cognitive process and it is relevant that as far as you can see, sharing that out upstream to your members will help you check to see if in fact um, you are, you know, uh, in orbit <laughs> and completely out of touch or if you're actually working on stuff that is relevant and important to members. And uh, Fairbairn really uses this whole trust idea 
as um, an essential ingredient in a cooperative. That this is what keeps that keeps members connected and keeps them wanting to invest and keeps them wanting to be, you know, beneficiaries. So I think that the board has a has a very um, critical role that's above what's going on um, in the operations. And um, and then Fairbairn really d dwells on this relationship idea, and and I think this is really helpful because um, well obviously and he's he's really focusing on the member owners as a key relationship that we want to have in the cooperative since you know we don't see they're, they're the members are hard to see but if we're really asking the questions about you know how are members dynamic what if we don't think of them you know in a certain way how do we push around the the, the picture and the relationship that we have with members and what's important and how do we tell that story as we do it um, then we are really saying we're taking that relationship um, we're taking that relationship seriously so you know he's saying look if we focus on that if we understand it uh, as a source of ideas uh, it could be a strength so I recommend this reading and those are some highlights as it relates to um, he also he also talks uh, in 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 more detail about um, the cognitive work and in in our um, Peter Senge organizational learning thinking organizations all of that stuff is very much connected to the ideas that um, that Fairbairn is presenting when he's talking about how cooperatives need to be kind of alive and well um, when they're going about their daily chores um, Okay, so next, to build on that idea, it's time for some interaction. And I'm going to pull up a worksheet that is included in the resource packet. And it's just one of these tools. It's you know, nothing special, but the organizational structure might be useful to you and your board when you um, start to play around with this. So there's three kind of top level questions. One is, what do we want to learn about and what do we want to teach? What study and engagement ideas do we have? And how might the board include members in the work? Okay. Um, the sub questions are more like um, filling in this column. What are the trends? Topics? Do they really hold water? Believe me, when you do this for the first time, you're going to come up with you're going to come up with more ideas than you can manage. You'll have ten years of ideas. And so you need to be able to hone your thinking and refine your thinking around what do we think are the strategic um, tensions in place and the, and the trends that we should be um, using as you know, fodder, you might call it, for this leadership position that the board is going to assume. And then... Um, you can't just stop there with labeling a trend and saying, oh, this is important. The next thing is really you want to say, so what are the questions that we think uh, we should be grappling with? Uh, what do we think the questions are that um, we should be exploring on behalf of our members and then sharing the information that, that we're gathering both in the inquiry process and um, and in the engagement process if we have people you know helping us coming up with those answers and you know so that's this idea of like how would we pursue um, study of a compelling question and then lastly okay if the board is actually going to do that um, how do we uh, develop a process that's transparent to the world and in particular our members because we really want them to get 
what we're doing and working on. So I ask you to uh, take uh, uh, a minute to think and to um, either send in a trend or a compelling question, okay, uh, for us to just see a few samples. We won't spend a long time on this, but I'd like to just, I have some ideas, of course, um, but it would be more fun for you to exercise your keys and um, see what you have to say. So what is a trend when you think about owners and members and the future of your cooperative? What's a trend that you think might need some cognitive exercise? So here's one, cost of food, can we afford it? Wow, cost of food, compelling question, <laughs> can we afford it? <laughs> Locally sourced food, strengthen local food system, increased interest in buying local, I love that, that's, you know, there's a trend. By the way, here's a trend. What are the resources? What are the questions? Use the CGEN listserv to see who in the country is actually working on this topic. Okay. Carbon footprint concerns. Fuel costs, global transportation. Educating people on how to eat well on a budget. Fair trade. So what's interesting is, let's take fair trade as an example. Let's call fair trade a topic, okay? And then we'll say, all right, well, what are the trends that are impacting the idea of fair trade, right? And um, that then turns fair trade into a dynamic idea. Like, okay, now we can actually see tr uh, a, a topic over time because we're, we're mapping out what's affecting it. Um, good, uh, here's a couple questions how to engage refugee immigrant population in uh, in the community, all right? So then first, you'd, so you'd wanna say, so, um, and maybe, uh, and maybe you did, let me see. Um, say, all right, well, and, and maybe it's self-evident. Self what What is that learning uh, helping us do, right? Um, uh, great question, what's the point? And, because you'd wanna see, well, are we looking at like, embracing that uh, that diversity and including it in our in our cooperative thinking and perhaps you know um, what are the desired outcomes with this new emerging um, uh, uh, aspect of our community um, how do we attract young people into the cooperative movement um, let's see what will our regional economy be in 2020 Mm -hmm. um, oh, here's a great comment. Separating trend from fad. Uh, thanks for that. You know, really good. How do you do that? You um, you work on it. You think about it. You 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 learn about it. Um, what role will our co-op play in that? And so there's some really great um, some great ideas here and. Uh, to me, it's like, okay, if we could get the right topics, if we could get the right active learning going on, um, we maybe, this is a maybe, maybe we'll have a higher chance of having people engaged, right? So first of all, maybe we'll have a higher chance of just having directors engaged, <laughs> right? Maybe directors will go, oh, I didn't know that's what uh, governing a co-op could be like. I thought it was about overseeing you know, a store operation. 
uh, maybe we can reframe the relevance of serving on the board to actually, you know, how do we as a group take on learning about something like sustainable agriculture and economy? Um, why would that be uh, a good idea? What's the compelling question that we'd be exploring? Uh, does this seem relevant to our members and our community? Um, if we don't take a leadership role, who will? Uh, stuff like that, right? And then going back to that quote by Carver, if the leaders actually are taking that seriously and engaging in that conversation, um, members, and in other words, if you have a transparency around your process, transparency meaning um, that you're telling your story, it's not, you're not keeping it secret, you're not learning and thinking in isolation, you're actually doing it on purpose, why? Because this is uh, how you, as a small group of people, think about what's important to all of your members, and you're thinking about the world, and you're really trying to, um, you know, kind of conjure up the idea that this is part of what it means to be a co-op. We're we're taking advantage of our uh, uh, of of the fact that we're here to come together to meet, um, you know, to meet common. Uh, what was that de definition of a co-op? The um, producing some common benefit and value. You know, we're not taking that for granted. If we took it for granted, we would say, you know, gee, we've created a natural foods industry. Uh, we're good. We're done. <laughs> and um, and no, I think most of us are saying, well, there's something more to it. Uh, we still have some more. Uh, we still have some more work that we can do. The question is. Um, what is it and how do you approach it and how do you do it in a manner that allows um, your members to see what the heck you're up to. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to show you, thanks for your, all your ideas, that was really fun uh, for me and hopefully interesting for you. Um, everybody okay out there? <laughs> We're going to another picture. Um, this picture um, is helping us organize our um, sense of time so that um, the time scope that we use to organize ourselves isn't too broad and that we can actually be productive in it and yet what we're talking about, um, and and if you've and if you've had the good fortune to um, observe or hear Gar Alperovitz or or some of some of uh, the speakers in that um, category of work, what they're saying is, look, take a very broad view of time. Um, Gar Alperovitz talks about 30-year kind of time frames. And um, and that we can get our head around that type of of of, uh, of time. And yet, you know, since um, a board term might be three years, you know, we really we want to really keep it narrow and talk about the next meeting and what we're going to do before my board term is expiring. And yet, the conversations I think that the ends dialogue inspires are. Um, quite far-reaching in terms of time. So, um, handily, a lot of our costs have been around for about 30 years, so all we have to do is look back and actually an ask the question uh, re related to our own co-op, saying, gee, you know, did anything change in the last 30 years? Has change happened? And take advantage of the answer, which will undoubtedly be yes, to say, oh, and look, obviously change is going to happen. And then the question then becomes, um, how do we want to influence the change? Are we able to? Um, so that time frame may be too broad. So now we're going to kind of uh, dissect that a little bit, make some smaller slices. We're going to take now from the middle to the left side and the milestones that I started using uh, are the annual meetings. They have a regular rhythm. Uh, the pattern of once a year seems, you know, kind of manageable. 
And so right now, if we look ahead, you all can imagine having, you know, maybe your annual meetings already happened on N08, so you have to skip that one. But you could probably picture, you know, on your calendar the idea that you're going to have three annual meetings coming up, one this year, one the year after, one the year after that. And by so doing, you're giving yourselves this great little time management tool saying, all right, here we are now. What is it that we would want to present or share or know or have explored by the time we get to that next annual meeting or the next one or the next one? Or maybe we say, oh, you know, I, I bet we can really get clear on this one, but we're going to have some options for the next two because, you know, we don't want to pin ourselves down and whatever. But this time frame to me is saying, I bet we can manage this. I bet we can do it. Um, and then we have our regular board meetings. And um, this picture of a regular board meeting is meant to demonstrate that we have some stuff that we're going to have to take care of. It's going to be on the agenda. We're going to have some board business. We're going to have some monitoring. We're going to have something. But that we have this open time and it's subject to design okay you may have a pattern where you are using all of your time and not doing much strategic thinking but i'm suggesting that hey if your precious resource is the time that you spend in your board meeting the question is how are you spending it and then since in any one meeting you know you're not going to like solve the world's problems what we need to do or actually fully study uh, anything that you're working on you need to see that these open times in your board meetings can string together as a sequence of time and you can build your wisdom and knowledge like one meeting at a time. I would say that you could do 60 to 90 minutes in a meeting and maybe you can do that if you say you meet monthly 12 times maybe you can do that 8 out of 12. Right. So not even saying every meeting, but that's possible. Um, why is this important? Why is this important in the including uh, members in the ENDS dialogue workshop? Um, one of our most important resources that we use is time spent by directors. Um, it's precious. It's limited. And sometimes we might be like in a meeting, right, and not see how it connects to um, meetings before it or after it, or the idea that we're actually building intentionality over time with our annual meetings as our milestones, or that what we're actually trying to do as governors is influence change uh, between now and sometime in the future. And the reason that we're trying to do that is because it's going to be better for our members if we are successful. So how do you get from, you know, this idea here of, um, you know, affecting the change on a 30-year time frame to the idea of what's going on in this meeting here in, you know, August of, of 2008? So there's a time scope thing. There's a blank one in the work in the in the workshop materials, and um, I'd love to know if uh, if you find it to be useful. I personally need to like see underlying structure, so that if we're going to have an hour long conversation about sustainable agriculture in a board meeting, I want everybody to know why we're having that conversation. And I want everybody to see that we're not going to turn around and change a program in the store the next day, that actually we're, we're doing this over long term. We're building wisdom and knowledge. Every now and then we're going to drop out of that process. We're going to check to see if we have the policies that we want. And we're going to do all of this in a transparent manner so that our members and whoever else we're including in the process um, can see that we're taking a leadership um, position, all right? And let's just talk for a minute about this um, about this middle range. 
I've started using the phrase, so just imagine yourself standing up in front of the members at the annual meeting and saying <laughs> blank, right? So um, like we're talking about, if we go back to that account cooperative accountability, that the whole point is that we're producing a benefit and value on behalf of the members. And, and then we're doing that, we're as governors, we're looking at that dynamically. And now it's just start imagining what is it that we want to be saying to our members at these future annual meetings? What type of leadership and and um, and uh, leadership position do we want to be representing? Um, you know, this idea of being uh, an agent or um, a trusted agent or being an agent of change, right? Um, it's really compelling ideas and. I think if you use the annual frequency, since we already kind of have that built in, I mean, part of what we're going to go to next is kind of this, well, what are all the ways that, you know, we can be including members, but the what, kind of an underlying premise here is that, like, how can we just reuse some of the things that we already do? <laughs> so we already have an annual meeting, hopefully. We already have an annual report. How can we take advantage of the fact that we do those things and then really kind of let our leadership blossom, um, you know, our, our leadership position blossom. All right, so that's that's what we're trying to do on some frequency and annually is good. And I think, you know, what we'll talk about in a minute is that, in fact, there's a way where, where this becomes almost one unit um, because, quite frankly, a year is really fast. So... The reason that I put out three annual meetings is because like the next annual meeting is like going to be here before you know it. And you want to be asking yourselves, um, how is that annual meeting connecting to the, the others, the ones that have come uh, already and the ones that are going to be coming after that? What can we imagine um, happening there? All right. So uh, thanks for that. Here we're going to go to um, – oops, did that. Next. All right. We're going to um, talk about, you know, the, the in, in, in a little more detail, these things that we just looked at in the time scope chart. Um, and in particular, we're thinking about them uh, in relationship to, quote unquote, including members, right? Because it's like, if we say members are it, um, of course we want to be in including them. And well, what does that look like? So regular board meetings. Um, uh, well, okay, before we go here, what we want to do is say, first of all, you have to kind of get oriented, right? So all the stuff we just worked on uh, allows for these ideas to um, to work, right? So if in our regular board meetings we're actually um, taking seriously the ENDS dialogue, um, doing serious inquiry around stuff that's important, then actually talking about what's going on in the regular board meetings uh, equals um, telling the story about uh, about our work around this around this topic right if our regular board meetings are fully consumed by some other kind of work then it doesn't count <laughs> and you know uh, get help <laughs> because uh, this will be fun and and hopefully valuable and um, and then you can use your regular board meetings as a way to, as, as a foundation, all right? So first of all, if people, members come to your board meetings, um, I mean, the, the, this idea here of um, this first line and all these things talks about, like, what's the relationship uh, with others? And, um, and the regular board meeting is kind of from no communication with others to two-way communication with others, 
but if it's two-way communication, it's definitely an all-to-some relationship, all right? And one of the things that, uh, that you want to design into your process um, is an all-to-all -all relationship, all right? So if members come to your meeting, that's cool, um, but again, don't look at them as like, okay, those are our members because that's some of your members, all right? and really own that you your responsibility is to all the members so how do you um, how do you transmit what's going on in your regular board meetings to all the members so um, really writing about what you're working on is so far kind of the best that I've come up with or the best that, that I've seen and the newsletters and the website are great for that. There's, you know, really good examples of, um, of, of, of this. And if you can create a pattern, um, great. <laughs> like be intentional. How do you um, chronicle? How do you, how do you tell the story about the board's work? Uh, it'll be kind of more interesting for everyone. The more interesting that your work is, um, and even though the newsletter and the website is one-to-one -one, kind of by structure always ask for input you know say hey here's how you could feed back to us on this um, have a have an email address or a place that they can drop something in the store or make sure that when you do your annual meeting which we'll talk about in a minute you include you know a feedback loop um, the point isn't so much to get overwhelmed with input, but the idea that you're telling the story, that you're creating the chronicle, and that you are consistently asking for input really works in your favor um, as, as leaders, and, and people will notice. Um, just a little trick that I kind of like is have different directors write articles. You don't have to say, hey, every director has to write articles because maybe somebody really doesn't like to write. But, you know, if you kind of check in with the board and, you know, three or four people are kind of willing, depending, and then over time you make sure that you don't just have one person, it's neat because then those directors have a chance to process what it is that you're working on when they're writing it. And the members and the rest of the world kind of gets that ver variety of voice. It's kind of neat. Um, and of course, there's a subplot to that. Uh, the whole article thing too is that um, uh, members who are interested in becoming um, uh, what what if uh, um, members who who are interested in what you're doing might become interested in becoming directors. So there's a, a subplot um, there. So see, here's a question that came in. What if member owners tend not to communicate with the board even when multiple channels and opportunities are made available? Hey, great, you know, don't feel bad about it. People get to choose their level of participation in the co-op. Don't let it stifle you from really fully assuming the leadership position and telling the story, right? Um, a lot of members are members because they want to shop at your store. Some of them really want to go to the picnic and would rather vote for the band than uh, than the board. And, you know, like relax on the, hey, they're not active enough. Uh, just like do your thing and make sure that you tell the story as you're doing it. And and by the way, I didn't, uh, that wasn't original of uh, voting for the band. That's in... Uh, a great article by um, Marilyn Scholl and Karen Zimmelman uh, that's in the owner's, uh, owner's toolbox. Uh, let's see. Um, the annual report. Okay. The annual report, as you can imagine, based on the time scope thing we just looked at, if you view the annual meeting as a chance of marking time that hey, let's organize our accomplishments or our inquiry process kind of on this frequency. Take advantage of the annual report to tell the story in a broader sense. What path are we on? Where are we going? Um, does, this, you know, does this make sense? 
Um, is it connecting to you know the desired outcomes that we have? Why are we picking these things that we're working on? Um, I call this uh, medium to low frequency, especially low frequency. And what I mean by that is if you connect this year's work to multi-year framework of the past and future. So if you, in your annual report, are, are mentioning and bringing forward work that has been done by the board, and you are speaking about your intention, about how you have made this progress, or how you were stymied and challenged by what you were trying to do, but you were still trying to do it, and how that's moving you forward. And maybe even your annual meeting has something to do with that work, that um, you're now talking in this annual report about maybe a three-year window of time, right? Maybe the last two years, the year that you're in, and the next year. And all of a sudden now, 30 years doesn't seem you know, so, so out there because look at we're able to talk coherently in, in a, in a, in a three-year um, time frame already. Um, okay, annual meeting, great time to have kind of a milestone event if you want. Some people are bringing in speakers um, and running some activities uh, so that there's some engagement. Um, celebrate, you know, share with each other, be involved, but then also see that the people who are in the room are not all your members. They're just some of your members. And like we just talked about, uh, the annual meeting is just one of those um, uh, multiple channels and opportunities. And like most of your members are not going to come. So plan for a way to follow up with an all-to-all -all situation so that all of your members are connected to the content that you're developing at the annual meeting, all right? So that's like the, the really you know, simple way to design in so a, an, uh, an all-to-some can translate to an all-to-all. -all. Of course, you still have the issue of, well, you know, gee, are they reading the newsletter? There are limits. Um, you know, you could write really small stuff and stick it on vegetables, <laughs> but, you know, I don't recommend it. Um, so anyway, annual meetings can be fun. Uh, uh, Gar Alperovitz, Michael Schumann, um, uh, let's see, PCC had uh, the um, uh, Michael uh, Funk f from... Uh, um, UNFI, um, you might have um, local farmers, you know, other local businesses, you know, really, it, it, you want this content, if you're going to use it as a, as a, a, a design um, element in your overall, including members in your um, ENDS dialogue, you're going to want to make sure that your annual meeting kind of activity uh, and content is connected to the board's leadership position that you've assumed around your inquiry process, right? So it's so it's not like, gee, why are we talking about this? Hopefully, you've made a case because in your regular board meetings, you've you've been intentional about the questions that you're asking and the process and the learning you're doing and the books that you're reading, and now we're punctuating that work uh, once a year with an annual meeting. All right. Um, here's a few other things. Um, uh, some co-ops have more than annual meetings. Um, uh, two co-ops I work with have semi-annual meetings. One is kind of the annual meeting, and the other one is a semi-annual meeting. And again, this would be really dependent on you know what 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 works in your community and what makes sense for your process. Uh, I'm not saying you know go out and add this, but if you're doing it. If you're already doing it, do it with intention. Figure out how is this helping us with our our uh, our development culture and and kind of exploring the the future of um, of a co-op. Special member events. Um, co-ops are running World Cafe events where there's a strategic question put out in advance and and maybe there's been some development of that question and then you then you have a process of, of um, 
inviting members to come and explore that question with you. Um, it's not an annual meeting. It's a special. It's a special meeting. Um, cool. Know why you're doing it. Work hard on what the question is. Um, have it be fun. Um, you know, um, and short. <laughs> so people want to come back. People tell their friends. Right. Um, member owner surveys. Uh, Two-way communication, all to all, with representative sampling. Uh, the most important thing is really know what you're after. Why? What are you trying to learn? Uh, the broad survey, you know, is really tricky. The one where you really know why you're doing it is, you know, might actually be helpful. Um, the survey takes exam, you know, takes advantage of the idea of scientific sampling so that um, you, you're not just interacting with people who you are inviting or who happen to show up. Um, uh, we recommend you use professional survey people. Uh, NCGA has finished a project and they have some um, survey resources available and you know not to discredit a homegrown survey but really answer these questions what are we trying to know and how can we really rely on it was it done um, using all of the necessary ingredients. Um, and before I come up to uh, some of your questions, so we're we're getting close to um, the end of what I have for you. So if you have some questions you want to be thinking about, um, I want to just dwell on this idea of remembering. So part of the cognitive process is um, is is remembering what we've done already. <laughs> and since we have uh, iterative nature of our of our boards, it's by design. Um, how do we remember the stuff? And um, my my, rec my my recommendation, my best shot at it right now is really take this writing newsletter articles idea seriously and keep them in a way that the board has ready access to them. Like distribute copies to people, and they can put in their board binder or that you know somehow you have like our growing folder of wisdom and knowledge and in a way that you're being very purposeful about what you're doing and and keeping track of it so that if you kind of project ahead five years and you imagine that you've been um, good at this at the at the inquiry process and being transparent and including others in your work how can you go and read about it, right? Where would you go? And please don't do it in your minutes. It's not minutes are not meant to be a chronicle of building wisdom and knowledge. Um, but just imagine if you had this little booklet of your progression of of articles or whatever. That then, if a member was interested in what you were doing and considering becoming a, a director, you would be able to um, say, "Well, here's our last five years worth of." Of, of, of thinking and here's the three policies that we wrote as a result of that effort or whatever but somehow you have to purposefully pay attention to uh, to remembering okay um, and so in a minute I'm just going to review uh, kind of some of these resources and now I'm just going to kind of come up here and and uh, and scan some of your questions that have come in um, so let's see when you say ask for input, what kind of questions are the best to get the best kind of input? Since we are leading, do we ask, are we going in the right direction? Or do we ask something like, what direction can you, what direction do you think we should go in? Okay, cool. Um, so how I approach that dilemma is let's make our best guess. Okay. We're not going to, uh, we are going to have ideas when we ask ourselves the question, what do we think important trends are that we should be thinking about? We will come up with some compelling questions. Okay, So we're going to have ideas. I think that you want to be transparent in the process. That you, So look, share with the world, wow, 
we've been working for the last six months on really honing our thinking around the the, the, the most important trends affecting our community and our co-op and our members and impacting our lives. And here they are. And here were the questions that came up for us when we were working on that. What do you think, right? So you're checking your work. Um, and, and then, what do you think? <laughs> it's like, are we going in the right direction? Well, you know, direction is tricky because what does it mean? Let's say that we're studying gee, where's everybody living? How are we insulating our houses? I mean, just pulling a couple of things out of the, the air, you know. What's happening with local and regional food producers? I mean, you might be studying something with no direct link to a new program or activity in the store. So you're asking people like, are we thinking about the right things? Are there things that you're thinking about that you don't see on our list, right? That's probably what you're, you're after. Um, and certainly, What's your input? Um, just if you look at the, I'm going to show you a resource. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell has this uh, video of what um, can we learn from spaghetti sauce. And, um, and I don't want to spoil it for you, but asking the question, what do you want, is, um, uh, is, is, is not really the best question. <laughs> and, you know, I've heard that in boardrooms. Like, well, but we don't know what members want. And so, like, like just don't go there it's like think about what should we be thinking about what's our what's our strategic thinking process because believe me in the store on a day-to-day -day basis people are managing what's going on the shelf so on a certain level members needs are being met day-to-day -day with the at, at the consumer level and you're like way up above that going hmm when we're thinking about what's going on in the world in the next 5 10 20 you know however many years what's going on that we should be paying attention to and my guess is you won't be that far off. Um, let's see. Um, I want to mention that the ideas that we're talking about here um, might not be compatible with how your board is currently spending its time. And you 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 don't want to just like go oh here's a new thing let's do this you you probably need to pay attention to your current process and analyze how you can create a change successfully right um, so a really easy example I mean you could have a, a million examples of this what you're doing that you would have to change but but I've observed some boards where they were spending all their time or most of their time on the monitoring of limitation policies. It was just consuming everything. And they, they learned how to do it differently. They took on new discipline, new group process. They got really good at fulfilling that accountability function. And that change allowed them to open up time in their regular board meetings to do this other kind of work. So you have to be very intentional and purposeful, I think, about how you um, how you approach something like this. This is um, meant to be a long-term sustained effort and you can only do that if you have the right systems and process and discipline and training in place to allow it to happen. Um, if you have uh, directors who need to talk about products in the store at every meeting, just for example, that it'll be hard to then have the the, the seminar-like conversation about um, you know the regional food production or something else. Right? Um, okay, suggestion on um, uh, on remembering is um, maybe a book by uh, George Roth on learning histories. So thank you for that because remembering is something we have to um, get good at. So let's see. So number one, I think it'd be really fun if uh, if directors uh, tried out using the CGN listserv. Not so much for, uh, I mean, certainly ask the question, gee, how do we create discipline around our monitoring process? That would be good for what we just talked about. But also, how do we frame the question around sustainable agriculture or local economy? Or how do we think about the importance of attracting young cooperators and that kind of stuff. Um, and so let's see. 
Here's a link to Fairbairn's thing. Peg Nolan wrote a three-page summary of Brett Fairbairn's 20-page article. Um, it's, it's, it's good. It's useful. Every sentence is kind of a, a whopper because, you know, she did really consolidate it down. So it's like maple syrup instead of, uh, instead of the uh, sap, though. I don't want to imply that, that um, <laughs> Fairbairn's thing is sap. <laughs> um, I'll post this. Uh, it's not up there right now, but I'll post this uh, essay by Carver on leading, following, and the wisdom to know the difference. He has three great subheads there. Um, attentive listening, studious learning, and sound judgment. And it's just, it's just, just for the subheads alone, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's good. Um, the David Bohm book, um, you know, it's, it's, if, if you're, if you can read academics, uh, it's great. Um, and so only approach it with uh, that disclaimer. Um, these uh, resources are going to be available uh, either in the workshop packet or on the, in the file repository. That worksheet that we played around with, the double circle board leadership chart, the thinking about members dynamically, and the time scope, um, those will be available for you. And then uh, at TED.com, there are, uh, there's just a tremendous number of interesting videos. Um, this one I really like. I've shown it at some retreats. It's uh, it, people find it useful. What we can learn from spaghetti sauce, and I'll give you the tip that think of members as diverse and having you know different interests and needs uh, as the takeaway from there. And, and I won't tell you any more. And then this is uh, another one. Uh, Mark Bittman, what's wrong with what we eat? One thing that's neat that he does is he does. Um, uh, a quick history of food um, uh, from 1900 to present in like the whole video Malcolm Gladwell's is 18 minutes Bittman is another 18 minutes and uh, and so Bittman like does this his history of food in America in like five minutes and it's it's really uh, I think it would be potentially useful as a as a um, as a learning topic. And yes, I'll post the um, United Way diagram that shows uh, outcomes as well. Good idea. I wasn't going to do that, but I will certainly. I found it to be a, a nice, clear picture of uh, what is outcome. Uh, any remaining questions that you haven't sent in? We have a couple of minutes. Thank you for coming. Uh, we have the next uh, online workshop is recruiting and orienting new directors. I believe it's in two weeks. Um, it's the first one that we've done this year in a different day and time. It's it's um, we have some on uh, Tuesday. Check the website for the detail, but I think it's Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. So if that's a bad time for you, the recordings are pretty useful. Though I have to say that. Uh, um, um, they don't do so well on on uh, Macintoshes. Sorry, <laughs> that's a function of the Go to Webinar recording system. Um, and just to pop this back up on the screen here, I'll put up the participant list. I kind of lost track of how many we had all together on the session, but you were uh, wonderful to uh, to be with, and hope you found it interesting. And please provide your feedback when we end the when we end the meeting, which I'm going to do um, now. It uh, you'll get a you'll get a survey, and your comments are um, really helpful to us. We this is a new the new frontier of online distance learning, and um, and we take your uh, your feedback uh, seriously. So and also feel free to provide it in any other way too. Thank you. Have a good night.